when we're first learning how to draw or when we're first working with a new drawing medium, it can take some time to learn how to control that medium. And what do I mean by control? Well, basically it's the degree that you are able to make your drawing tool do what you want it to do. And that's the other part of drawing. So later on we're going to learn how to see better, in fact through the entire course, that's the main thing that we're learning. We're learning how to see, but then the other aspect of that is controlling your drawing hand so that it creates the line or the value and creates the shapes that you actually see. Um, it can take some time to develop that and um, and that's true for a beginning artist or even a experienced one. Sometimes if you change to a new medium, it may, there may be a bit of a learning curve in learning how to control that medium. Um, some factors that can affect your ability to control a, a drawing tool could be just how you're holding it. Um, and there's different ways of holding, say like a pencil like this, and some may give you more control and, uh, than others. Um, you know, how close are you holding it to the point versus, you know, backing up a little bit. And there's advantages to both, um, but I try to develop some control while holding the pencil further back so that I can see what I'm drawing. Um, it could also be determined by how you're sitting or standing, you know, how, just how you're, how you're feeling that day, even just your physical health that day can affect control. So there's a lot of different factors, but there are exercises that I'm going to teach you that will help you develop more control. And these are exercises that, again, beginning, beginning artists or even experienced artists can, um, can be helped by in learning, uh, developing your control. So the first medium we're going to work with um, is the pencils. Uh, we're going to work with this at home in your sketchbook and then you're going to do some of these exercises in the studio with the charcoal. And it'll be very different because you'll be standing up uh, working at an easel and so that'll be a very different experience but the exercises will be the same. Okay, so the first thing to understand when we're looking at a piece of paper in our sketchbook or even a canvas on an easel, if we're dealing with a rectangle shaped piece of paper or square, just know that we already, ha we already have four different lines, these edges of the paper to kind of work with. And so that's going to help me with my first line that I'm going to draw. So my goal is I'm going to take my pencil, I'm going to again hold it towards the center, and I'm right-handed, so I'm actually going to draw on this side of the paper first and work my way this way. If you are left-handed, you might want to start on this side and work this way. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to start just arbitrarily, just some distance, maybe about an inch or so from this edge. And I'm going to try to draw a straight line that will go from the top to the bottom. I'm not necessarily going to go touch the top and bottom edges of the paper, but I'm just going to try to draw a straight line. And as I'm doing it, I'm kind of guided by the edge of the paper, even though this has been torn out, it's not totally straight, but it still will help me. And my goal is to try to be as straight as possible and as vertical as possible. Now what's helping me is is I'm standing right on top of the line like basically like I'm as I'm moving the pencil I'm guiding it towards the center of my body. I'm not standing to one side or the other and that's really helping me keep things straight. stop there kind of look at it and you can see it's kind of wavy and stuff and that's okay um, it's okay if it's not perfect because 
we know how to make a perfect straight line, right? We use a ruler, but we're trying to develop control without a ruler. So the next line, I'm going to try to start at the same point, roughly about the same distance uh, from this line that this was from the edge here. And now I have this line to help guide me. So I'm going to keep trying to draw this straight vertical line. And as I'm going, I'm just trying to keep the distance from this line consistent. And that's, that'll help me. And notice the speed that I'm drawing. I'm not doing it too fast, especially at the beginning. Hopefully, as I practice and develop more control, maybe I will be able to increase the speed and still remain pretty straight and vertical. So do another one. So I'm only going as fast as I feel like I can still control the medium. So I'm going to go all the way across. Now there may come a point where your hand starts to hurt, you know, cramp a little bit and just take a break and that's okay. Maybe try holding it differently if it's cramping too much. Um, like I was holding it pretty tight, but now I'm gonna try to loosen up a little bit so I'm not clamping down on the pencil too much. And sometimes that will help the control or hinder it, but I'm just trying different things. Notice too, I'm not touching the, the paper. I'm trying to keep my hand kind of above the paper. So I'm not resting my hand, which I know that if I did rest my hand, I might have more control, but I'm trying to develop control without doing that. Okay, so once you have a page filled with vertical lines like this, now the next step is to start at the top. Again, I'm right-handed, so I'll start on this side. If I was left-handed, I might start here. And I'm gonna draw a horizontal line. And let me see if I can see the edge better. So again, just like this edge helped me with this line, this top edge here will help me with this line. So I'm going to, again, try to center myself so that sort of like the pencil, point of the pencil is sort of in the center of my body here as I'm drawing. Um, and I'm just gonna to try to draw this horizontal line and I'm looking at the top edge of the paper as I go along to help me with keeping it straight and horizontal as possible. Then I do another one that's roughly the same distance. Then I have the line that I just drew to kind of help with that this line here and go all the way across. Now, you, if you've been playing around with um, the speed, you may notice some things. Like, the, the slower I go, the more accurate I may be. But if I speed up, and I'll do it here, 
the line might be straighter. Well, it wasn't too straight there. But generally, um, the faster you go, you may have a straighter line, but um, it may not be quite as accurate. So you gotta find that happy medium between, you know, if you go too slow, then your line might be kind of jagged and shaky. But if you go too fast, then you may be not as accurate. So you gotta try to find that medium point. So as I'm going along, I'm kind of just I'm making sure that my body is still pretty centered. Like I'm even kind of um, shifting my body weight a little bit from here over to here as I'm drawing, just to kind of make sure. So I'm not way over here while I'm over here and drawing this and I have a tendency to kind of move the line up or down. Okay, so at the end, of this process, you should end up with something like this. Now this has a double um, purpose. One is to obviously develop your control, but to also get us to start to understand that when we're drawing from three the 3D world and we're transferring that to a 2D uh, surface, like a piece of paper, we want to start thinking about the an, an imaginary grid sort of in front of us. And there are certain artists, even from historical times and today, who have used a grid, uh, either <clears throat> one that's been etched into a sheet of glass that's between them and say whatever it is they're drawing or painting, and then using that grid, a, a corresponding grid on the canvas or piece of paper, and then drawing that. Okay, so the next exercise will help us with control, not only of drawing straight lines, but also sort of the, the accuracy of, of the lines, the direction, directional accuracy. So this is called point and shoot. And so basically, I'm gonna start with a just a point, not too big, not like a huge um, dot like this, just, just a dot about that size. Again, if you're left-handed, you might want to put it on the other corner. And then I'm going to come down about maybe two, two and a half inches, draw another dot. And then my goal is I'm going to start at the top dot, and my goal is to shoot down to this dot, and my what I'm trying to do is hit the bullseye, where I'm trying to land right on this bottom dot, while also keeping the line straight. So again, I'm gonna to try to not rest my hand on the paper, kind of keep it floating a little bit. And I'm gonna try my best to point and shoot right at that dot. So here I go. All right, so I missed it. So I was on the same level, but I kind of missed it. Now, as I went down, I kind of knew I was going to miss it, but I didn't want to bend it. So I just kept kept drawing straight because we still want the line to be straight. Um, but if I miss it, I just keep going. So just imagine like if you're shooting an arrow, <clears throat> unless you're like, I don't know, Green Lantern or something, not Green Lantern, Green Arrow or something, um, you're not going to be able to like bend that arrow back to the target, just let it go and let it land where it, where it is. So the idea is I'm trying to hit that dot exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and draw some more dots across the page. And then point and shoot and see if I can do better. So again, I'm, I'm aiming for that dot. Nope, oh, missed that one. Aiming for the other one. Okay, that was better. There we go, bullseye. Pretty good. Let's aim for this one. Oh, that one I missed a little bit. 
So again, the speed in can be a factor. So if you go too fast, it may interfere with accuracy. But if you go too slow, well, I'm really off that one. Wow. Okay, and this one. Okay, not too bad. So, um, so I got this one, this one. I'll count this one. And I don't really want to count that one. Oh, I'll count that one. It's pretty close. So one, two, three, four out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So about 50%. Okay. So maybe I'll do some more and then gradually get a little bit further distance here. So maybe I'll do some that are a lot further down and try that. that one so again where you're standing how you're standing like if I'm standing way to the side like from the from here trying to hit that I might not be able to be as accurate as if I'm like right on top of it and I'm just going down looking pretty good awesome this one so I do a lot like you in, in my mind I'm imagining that line and a lot of drawing is that where you just sort of imagine that line and some some artists like to do what are known as ghost lines where they kind of draw it in the air first and then they actually draw the line really bad with the second to last one, I don't know. I think it kind of relaxed. That was not too good either. Whoa, really off there. Okay, so some more, just so, just fill, fill the page with some of these. And again, you can play with long ones, short ones, kind of play around with that. And this time, maybe this last row, I'm going to speed up a little bit just to see how I do with accuracy and with speed. Okay, not too good. That's not too bad, but a little shaky there. Okay, that's better. So with these quick ones, awesome. I'm not too worried about it being totally accurate. I'm just trying my best to get within the ballpark there. All right, not too bad. So yeah, as, as the more you do it, hopefully the more accurate you'll be. So fill the page with these point and shoots. So another reason why we do this is to understand that a lot of drawing is this point to point. So for example, if you're drawing, say the human body, um, and you're drawing an arm. So a lot of drawing could be like drawing from the shoulder to the elbow and then the elbow to the wrist and the wrist to the tip of the pinky. Like that is basically point to point drawing. And so um, a lot of drawing is that and we'll, we'll be doing some continuous line drawing which is basically you're continuing to draw one entire line and figuring out where to start and stop is, is a big part of that exercise. Okay, so this next exercise is similar to that, except we're not going to have any points um, drawn. We're just going to imagine a horizontal, these two horizontal lines, one on the top and one on the bottom. And the first line I'm going to draw is a diagonal, and I'll draw it like this direction, doesn't matter really what direction, but I'll start here and I'll roughly about that length, about two, two and a half, three inches or so. Now my goal is I'm going to draw another diagonal that's parallel with this that starts at the same 
point and ends at the same point. So this one, you definitely have to be right on top of it to gauge that. So keep it parallel. Stop roughly where it seems like there's this evenness between that and that. Then I'm going to roughly about the same distance. Again, you're, you're not using a ruler to measure it, you're just using your eye. And then continue with keeping it as parallel as possible and starting and stopping on the same axis lines. All right, so there's one. So I may do another one. Maybe I'll uh, do one going in this direction, maybe slightly longer, and we'll see how that goes. So again, I'm gauging between how fast I'm going versus how slow. You can see it's starting to raise up a little bit. So I'm going to look back at this and really try to keep reestablish this horizontalness of it. So it's okay. It kind of goes up there. So that way I don't want to want it to kind of go like that like like I don't want it to start looking like that or anything <laughs> I want to keep it all horizontal all right so fill a page with, with those um, diagonal lines okay the last exercise we're going to do is actually my favorite and this is one where you kind of start in the middle as best as possible and you're going to start to draw this small curve and as you're going along you're, it's just one continuous curve and you're creating this spiral effect and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep the, the distance between the line consistent so it takes a while to establish it. So right now, so I have this distance established here. So I'm going to try to keep that consistent all the way around as much as possible. So that it's almost like if you were, you know, up above in a helicopter looking down at a hedge maze or something, then the rows of the hedges would generally be equally distant. So I'm trying to keep that as much as possible. Now there might be spots where it bulges out or it dips in. Just try to reestablish as you're going along to keep that overall equidistant spacing. It's okay to restate. So I started to dip in a little bit so I'm kind of going back And then keep, don't go too fast. So this is one you definitely want to slow down. And if you start, try not to start getting wider and wider. So there's a tendency to start getting wider and wider as you go around. So just try your best to keep having to look at what you drew before. And that's another major aspect of drawing is a lot of times as we're drawing, we have to look at things we drew before it to gauge what we're drawing now. Because it's all about the relationships. Spatial relationships, distance relationships, size relationships, value relationships. And so we have to look at previous marks that we made to help guide the ones that we're currently drawing. All right, so when you're done, kind of ass assess it and kind of look to see there's probably parts of the spiral that are pretty accurate and there's parts that aren't quite. And again, that could be because of just where you are in relationship to the spiral. 
um, and maybe do another one and see if you can do, do any better. So we'll do these in class as well using the charcoal mediums.